Okay, guys, when I say viewer discretion is strongly advised, not safe for work, not safe for your peace of mind. This is just the most repugnant. <clears throat> yeah, you've been warned. Viewer discretion is strongly, strongly advised. Furries. They're one of the internet's most infamous subcultures. While years ago they were maligned based on the strange presentation of their interests, today furries are generally accepted with the rest of the internet and no longer mocked to nearly the same extent. However, with communities that participate in unorthodox behavior, a few bad actors being brought to light will often cast a shadow on the rest of them. The last time we touched on the furry community, we discussed a particularly strange individual who spent her time attempting to legitimize her own zoophilia acceptance movement. Hypnotist Sappho believed that humans and animals could be in relationships. She herself claimed to have abused several dogs to reflect these beliefs. When something like this is said on a public platform, those who participate are often lambasted for their takes on these subjects, and deservedly so. I do not have a thing for humans. I am more attracted to dogs like German Shepherds. If you are willing to stay and listen to my view and deck- No. No. I'm not. I'm not. This video is 36 minutes long. I don't have a ton of confidence that in 36 minutes you're gonna say anything that makes anyone go... You know what? You're right. It's totally fine. But for just how awful she was, even Sappho herself disavowed one particular name from the furry community. Sappho claims that zoophiles are typically misunderstood, and speaks of someone else who is genuinely evil. Zoophilia is often very misunderstood, especially because of certain very terrible people and what you may have seen in the news. And someone that I will not mention if you remember that situation with the zoo sadism leaks a few years back. It's kind of funny to hear someone who had sex with a German Shepherd morally grandstand about anything, but regardless of that, it is somewhat perplexing, isn't it? Someone as deplorable as Sappho, who spent her time intentionally attracting minors to Discord servers in order to expose them to her zoophilia community, stopped short of endorsing whatever happened in these leaks, as she refers to them. So what are those leaks? In September of 2018, a massive dump of files, including videos and chat logs, were released to the internet. These materials outlined the existence of an online community dedicated to zoo sadism, the practice of humans hurting animals for sexual pleasure. While reading that out sounds bad enough, as more and more leaks came out, the internet nearly exploded with how disturbing the content was. It seemed like for a time, everyone on this side of the internet was talking about the zoo sadism leaks, with a particular focus on one furry named Carol the Wolf. But, suddenly the investigation was dropped, seemingly on a technicality. Shortly after, Kiro came back to YouTube to tell the world that he was innocent of his crimes. I know this video isn't gonna please everyone. I fully expect people to make up new accusations and lies about me. I know this video may not please everyone, but I'm moving forward with my content and my channel. Since then, he's posted to YouTube multiple times, and is currently semi-active on Twitter, even bragging about getting the accounts of others banned. So what happened? Why after all of the chat leaks, conversation across every social media platform, and an official police investigation, did it all amount to nothing? This is the story of how Kiro the Wolf got away with it. Kiro the Wolf, real name Joshua Hoffman, was likely indistinguishable from any other internet user when he first came online. It's believed that sometime in 2012, he began to be involved with the furry fandom after a wallpaper of a bunch of people in fursuits caught his interest. Like any member of any fandom, he then began looking for places to express his newfound interest and discover like-minded people. He subsequently created a Vine, Twitter, and signed up for Fur Affinity, a forum dedicated entirely to the existence and discussion of the furry fandom. But he wasn't content just being a part of the community. He also wanted to share his passion with the world. On July 7th, 2013, 
he created his YouTube channel, simply titled Kiro the Wolf. From there, he began posting videos revolving around the fandom itself, with uploads like Alameda Fur Meat and Monthly Pittsburgh Comic Fur Bowl, showing footage of various furry meetups around the country. The oldest video he uploaded is actually dated the same day as the channel's creation, and features a video of a furry walking into a wedding to snap a photo with the bride and groom. We all have that one thing that drives us absolutely insane, and it makes us want to be so in the face of the fish. Ah. Enter Ashley Zoe Fox, someone who was aware of the furry fandom and felt it deserved to be covered in a larger platform. There's no doubt that strange internet-based subcultures call for further exploration and content, and at the time it was pretty popular to either mock or investigate corners of the web which are considered to be unorthodox. But Ashley wouldn't be the one to make the video that would shoot Caro to stardom. Instead, she nudged a personal friend of hers to make a video focused on the community. That friend was Shane Dawson. Loved werewolves, I was into the whole werewolf thing, you know, grr, and stuff. <laughs> but, um, I was looking for a werewolf wallpaper for my computer, and these, like, fursuits showed up. I'm like, oh my god. And I clicked on it, I set it as my wallpaper for, like, a week, and then my friend pointed out, I'm like, you're like furries? I'm like, whoa. It's a furry. Holy crap. So I looked it up and I got dragged right into it. While today he is maligned by many YouTubers and celebrities alike, at the time Shane was relatively respected and had a loyal audience who really enjoyed what he did. There were those that were critical of him, but his channel had just shy of 10 million subscribers, providing an unprecedented amount of attention to anyone who would co-star in his videos. More than any TV show, and more than just about every other YouTube channel that was around at the time. What's more, he was currently at the beginning of his arc as a YouTube documentarian. It's from areas of the web that typically do not receive much exposure. In May of 2018, he would release a video titled, Weird Side of the Internet, Furries. And today, we're going to be talking about furries. The first four minutes of the video are dedicated to just giving an introduction as to who Caro is. Shane reacts to some of his content, makes jokes at Caro's expense, but also makes it clear that he finds him to be a likable figure who he wants to know more about. It's at this point in the video when he reaches out to Kiro himself for an interview, and the two spend basically the entire rest of the video talking about the fandom. Stereotype, I guess, of furries, which is that it's a solely sexual thing. And a it's, lot of you guys say it's not, right? It's not. Honestly, the age variation in furries, it can go anywhere from a person to be 12 years old to like 60 years old. There's a huge range of ages in here. So most of the furry fandom is not a fetish. There is a sexual side to it, but it's not that large. Kiro wants to make it clear that while there are some weird furries who may be interested in the sexual side of things, he personally just does it because he's a fan of animals and wants to share in his hobby online. While Shane makes it clear that he finds the interest somewhat strange, as the video goes on he seems to actually take a liking to the idea of wearing a fursuit. He shines a pretty positive light on the community as a whole and gives his millions of fans the impression that furries, while there are weirder aspects to them, are ultimately nothing but a bunch of people partaking in a harmless hobby and having fun. And why wouldn't he say that? From the video, Kiro himself seems to be a pretty harmless individual based off their interactions. Apart from the obvious exposure Kiro got from the video itself, Shane also made a point to shout him out, encouraging his fans to subscribe to Kiro and get him to the 100,000 subscriber milestone. He deserves a lot more than that. Guys, please go to Kiro's channel and subscribe. Can we get Kiro to 100k? I think we can. Shane Dawson's fans began flocking to Kiro's channel, complimenting him on his sense of humor and lighthearted approach to the hobby. They seemed to generally enjoy his videos and push aside whatever cringe factor is typically associated with furries to just enjoy his content. I'm from Shane's channel, this is actually really cool, and Shane's sense of humor is offensive and funny, but he really likes you and you really opened my eyes to some things. Keep doing what you're doing. And it wasn't just a few nice comments either. Kiro's channel jumped from 10,000 subscribers to over 90,000 in that month alone. While previously he had been a name unknown to most, Shane had exposed Kiro's personality to a side of the internet that otherwise probably would have shrugged him off just based on his appearance. He continued posting videos like he had been making to his YouTube channel, and by early 2018, he had passed 100,000 subscribers, officially making him one of the most popular furry YouTubers ever. In fact, as of July of that year, he was ranked within the top 10 most subscribed 
thanks to fur tubers. Alongside more recognizable faces like Majira Strawberry. Majira, someone who is active on YouTube to this day, had done multiple collab videos with Kira where they donned their costumes together and promoted messages of love and tolerance for a group that, in past years, had been made fun of by a decent portion of the internet. Thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. Oh my god, I can't even comprehend this. Oh my god. Oh my god, you always make me happy. You're the best. You make me step up to tell people furries aren't bad. The cinematography was absolutely stunning in this video, Kiro. I've been here since 20k, and you've grown so much. And I think I'm speaking for everyone when I say I'm so proud of you, Kiro. Keep up the good work, man. We love you. Well, how sweet, and honestly, how inspirational. Kiro had gone from someone typically frowned on by society for his strange interest to someone celebrated online as one of the biggest poppy furs out there. Unfortunately for him, it would soon be revealed that his messages of love and tolerance were merely a facade, built for the express purpose of hiding something much, much darker beneath the surface. On the 16th of September, 2018, a number of logs began leaking from the furry community onto Twitter from a user by the name of Zudonym. These leaks would later be reposted by an account by the name of Mordecai, who posted a thread captioned, Content Warning! Zoophilia, Animal Abuse, Pedophilia. Caro the Wolf is a part of a circle of furries who participate in not only zoophilia, but also necrophilia, animal torture, and discussion of pedophilia. Here's the evidence. There are many, but I'll focus on him. According to Zudonym and the leaks, Kiro and a number of others had been engaged in these conversations for years, which they felt the need to expose after infiltrating their group for two of those years. But Mordecai themselves were not really sure who Zudonym was, nor did they know the full story behind all of it. All they had was the archive of what was previously compiled, and presented it as such. This content was compiled by the now-defunct Zudonym. I'll get more into this later. A few things before I start posting. I don't know who any of these individuals are, these screenshots date back literal years, and I don't know who Zudonym is. Many in the replies went on to speculate on the veracity of these claims and comment on if the chat logs that were leaked were real at all. Zudonym's reasoning for leaking all of these logs seemed to be some realization of how fucked up these people were once they were able to confirm more of their heinous actions. They say they know they'll be hated for betraying their friends, but feel the information has to be made public. Zudonym themselves also indicates that they are a zoophile, but that the rest of those involved are zoo sadists. This means that those they expose specifically enjoy necrophilia and snuff films was created of animals. I am sorry if people hate me for this or feel betrayed, but I don't care. Half of these people talk to me and use my chats to meet others. Fuck you. If the community took out its own trash, you wouldn't have this shit happen. So good on you. The bottom line is, there are way too many of you covering for your friends that are into slash sharing slash participating slash let alone fucking creating content such as this. This is not acceptable. Do you want to be accepted by society? Grow up. Some of these people were my friends. I burnt relationships I had with others for years for this. But you know what? When I find out my friend fucked a puppy to the point of splitting it open then left it for dead, that's not a fucking friend. To those of you who cover for these fucks, know that it eventually comes around one way or the other. When these people are arrested, you'll be right there with them. Because guess what? Zoo is fucking illegal. And if this is what Zoo is, good. It should be. So clearly, Zudonym here had seen something that they consider to be horrific, especially considering one particular line about a puppy. It's likely some of the most stomach-churning shit you've ever heard. As word got around about what had happened, the leaked telegram chats became the primary subject of the online investigation, with users attempting to determine their veracity based on the information presented. And, after actually going through the leaked chat logs which were alleged to be sent from Carol the Wolf in this telegram group, it's no surprise that everyone was so passionate about finding out if they were real. On October 23rd, 2016, a message was sent reading, Sorry for not responding last night, I passed out. But yeah, I'm okay with necro stuff if it's not that bloody, but I'm totally against killing for sex. I only do it with roadkill. Ooh, cub porn. I always loved puppy butt. Same. I need some puppy booty. Same. Let's go grab ourselves a real cub and an animal. Let's make some rare shit. For the unaware, cub refers to content specifically catered to those attracted to younger dogs, meaning puppies. And from these chat logs, there seems to be some indication that the two, being this Carol the Wolf account and this Snake Thing user, intended on creating bestiality films. That would be hot. Oh, it would be. I'm okay with humping a four-month-old. Same. Sorry. 
I'm a Yiffy. That's okay. Me too. There is message after message of Snake Thing and this Kiro account discussing this material in depth, sending animations back and forth of puppies being abused, talking about how they need to have sex with animals, and even discussing actual encounters they had with real life animals. Kiro claims that he used to stick his fingers in his childhood dog, and details a history of animal abuse at his hands. But Kiro and Snake Thing were just two of the people in these leaks. In fact, the conversations they had were relatively tame in comparison to what the rest of the community was talking about. There was talk of the creation of snuff films, as well as actual videos of animals being tortured and killed that came out with these leaks. Obviously, I cannot show the videos here, nor do I want to because of how disgusting and graphic they are, but I will read out a summary someone else posted at the time of the initial allegations where they described the videos in question. Obvious content warning ahead, these are extremely graphic, they will be disturbing, even though it's just a description of them, uh, you know, you've been warned. Hey, so just so you all know, if you don't have the stomach to watch the videos of Caro doing shit to these innocent animals, I'm gonna give you an extremely triggering thread of what I saw. There's so much more than just, he's a zoophile. Video 1. Kiro, in a suit head, forces a medium-sized dog to fillet sex toys, then the real thing. He anally penetrates the dog afterward. The dog runs out of the video several times and retracts and gags from the abuse. Video 2. A tied and muzzled German Shepherd is raped. Video 3. The corpse of a deer is used as a sex toy while its blood is smeared on Kiro's legs. It's worth noting that these particular videos were not actually Kiro. It was later confirmed to be another member of the chat. Video 4. A small dog is anally and orally raped. Video 5. A puppy is drugged and strapped to a log. It is anally and vaginally raped with the wide end of a baseball bat until blood is visible on the bat. The dog begins to visibly spasm. Now this is a lot to take in to say the least. With allegations of this uh, proportion and of this nature, People both inside and outside of the furry community began talking about it and it became one of the biggest stories of that year. People on Kiro's fur affinity account sent messages of concern, saying they hoped the accusations were simply fabricated as they had looked up to Kiro. Well, rest assured, he did have a response, being that all of the accusations were faked and that he had been hacked. Furries and drama. Before you go around believing these rumors about me, know the facts. My account was hacked. I would never do any of these things. These are faked conversations. All of this is someone trying to get attention. They're called trolls. If you choose to believe it without thinking about it logically, then fine. Become that online troll who has that mob mentality. But please always look at both sides first. It should be obvious that these logs are fake. They don't even talk like me. Some decided to give him the benefit of the doubt based on this response, and posted videos discussing the possibility that the logs were faked and Kiro had done nothing wrong. People go to insane lengths to destroy people they don't like. It is totally not out of the question that someone would have done this out of malicious intent, and they would have taken the time to do it. And it's worked! But Kiro's response itself is pretty lacking. The idea that simply because this Kiro the Wolf on Telegram didn't speak just like the Kiro everyone knew from Twitter and YouTube, that it couldn't possibly be him is just laughable. But let's give Kiro the benefit of the doubt. Especially with accusations as damning as these are, I mean anyone in their right mind, if they are innocent, would want to do their best to exonerate themselves. Kiro showed that according to his Telegram history, someone had accessed his Telegram account from a different IP address. Someone from Iran, supposedly, had hacked into his account. However, this also could have been done using a virtual private network in order to mask their true location. But clearly something was amiss. In further screenshots, users noted that there was an interesting icon at the top right hand corner of Kiro's screen. This icon is a key and indicates that Kiro had his own virtual private network active at the time of taking the screenshot. People called out Kiro for this as it seemed he had fabricated this hack using his own VPN, but Kiro simply claimed that he had been using a VPN anyway, and that alone is not evidence that he faked his own security breach. And he'd be right. With accusations of this magnitude, you need to bring a lot to the table in order to prove that someone is guilty. Accusations of this size can not only ruin someone's reputation, but also get them thrown in jail. So let's examine more links between this Kiro the Wolf account and the Kiro who is defending himself on Twitter. In the days following the leaks, every major platform known to man exploded with content about Kiro. The usual suspects like Mr. Mediker covered the story in videos and streams, while others created entire YouTube channels and Twitters dedicated to archiving the situation. When looking at the logs in their totality, it becomes much more difficult to discount that it was the Kiro we know from YouTube oh in these chats. The amount of connections are numerous, and for it not to be Kiro, 
it would have to be a nearly impossible coincidence. First of all, both Kiros have similar fetishes. In multiple of the messages, Telegram Kiro claims to have an interest in Vor, being one of his tamer interests. Amazing, I know. This is also reflected by the public Kiro the Wolf Twitter account. Both Kiros also claim to live in the same state. Telegram Kiro states, Hmm, just search around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm about an hour and a half away from there. Meanwhile, the public Kiro Twitter account similarly places him in Pennsylvania, nevertheless near the same city. Even beyond this, Telegram Kiro makes multiple specific references to videos that the other Kiro was involved in. At some point, he remarks that the Shane Dawson video had helped grow his channel a ton and talks about how it would be useful in getting more people to be accepting of the fandom. Oh, At one point, he discusses how he just filmed a YouTube video where he derped around in a random fursuit. He even has a a picture he took with his phone of the video's thumbnail. That video is on Caro's channel to this day. And the date of the upload is the same exact day Telegram conversations about the video took place. There's even instances where Kiro discussed videos that he hadn't released yet in the Telegram messages, and later on, the video came out. All of this is pretty convincing on its own, but things get much, much darker when you take into account one of the most specific things revealed in the chat logs. Kiro was the owner of a dog, a German and Australian Shepherd mix who he had since childhood. It was his family dog. Dog. In early 2017, this dog passed away due to an illness, which corresponds with his public tweets about the situation. I want to do a video tribute for my dog, but I don't know if that's something you guys would be interested in. So here's a poll. This was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Finally got to go to his grave. Goodbye, Coda. I never thought I would be saying that. It's an experience many people have, saying goodbye to a childhood pet. Something that, while sad, could be considered average. However, Telegram Kiro's messages on the subject were anything but average. They show Kiro expressing some level of remorse for the things he had done to his dog. Are you okay? Not really. I just got the news that my dog is dying of kidney failure. Yeah, I still miss him. I'm making a tribute video tomorrow and Friday. Yeah, my father is going to send me a picture of Coda in his casket when he gets home. Ah, there's a cow farm up the road, so I'm tempted to sneak over there and see if I can find a good spot to finger some cow butt. Thank you. I left the group because it reminded me of the stuff I did to him. Now that he's dying, I can't believe I did that to him. I can't be a part of that group any longer. I love him so much and- when he needs me, I can't be there. I'm almost two states away. Wraps arms around you. Try not to feel beat up about what you did. He still loves you in the end, and I'm sure he had a blast of a time with you. With some care, he could survive until you see him again, I think. Though, it'd be some cost, I think. For closure, for you, I think it'd be worth it. The connections between Telegram Kiro and the Popufer really go on and on. From music taste being the same, to even posting the same exact song in the chat as the Kiro Twitter account had posted the same day. If Kiro was somehow telling the truth at this point, and there was someone trying to frame him, they would have had to closely follow literally every single aspect of his life and know him personally. They would have to know private details about him that no one knew other than him. Additionally, the possibility that these chat logs were edited is actually an impossibility. After three days, you're unable to edit Telegram chat logs. Meanwhile, these conversations were years old. The idea of this being the work of some level 8 lizard squad mage was just extremely unlikely, and Kiro had no solid refute for any of the specific connections. He simply made vague statements on social media about being framed while maintaining his innocence. It was also at this point that Shane Dawson quietly privated the video he had done with Kiro, having heard of the controversy and not wanting to associate with someone who was an alleged animal abuser. Meanwhile, anyone who had given Kiro the benefit of the doubt walked back their prior claims, admitting that the evidence Kiro was the one in the logs was simply undeniable. Carol the Wolf is guilty. At this point, there's no question about that. There's been so much evidence that's come out that all signs point to him being guilty. While everything we've covered so far is bad, the previous part of this video is merely the tip of a massive bestiality iceberg. There's so much content you'd think Wendigoon would have a series on it. Regardless, I'll attempt to paint a picture of the kind of community Kiro was involved in and just how far back all of this goes. Given the kinds of interests zoophiles and zoo sadists have, there's no way they can openly talk about their sexuality, and I use that term for convenience's sake, on the open internet. Instead, they have to use anonymous websites associated specifically with their interests. Enter the Beast Forums, a now defunct site dedicated to a peaceful gathering of animal rapists. Oh the site God, had over 2 million accounts crazy. worldwide, and in this ocean of degeneracy, there sits one in particular that many took an interest in. The Dog Man 2. According to his profile, he's a male born on the 19th of May, 1994, from good old Pennsylvania. The reason this profile caught the attention of so many is because of the existence of a few pictures. Recall Kiro's dog, Coda, 
the same dog that Telegram Kiro discussed abusing in the leaked chat logs who later passed away. The dog itself is a German Shepherd and Aussie mix, giving him a very distinct appearance. On January 22, 2012, the Dogman 2 posted that he had just gotten a puppy, which bears a striking resemblance to Kiro's dog. The post itself reads, Hello, I got a puppy and he's now 6 months old. The pictures below are when I first got him, but I was wondering, when can I have anal sex with him? He has a sexy butt, emoji, but I don't want to harm him. So he has a sexy butt, emoji, but I don't want to harm him. So how old does he have to be to be ready for anal? One of these pictures was also posted to Kiro's official Furfinity page, which was also linked to his YouTube channel and Twitter account. The real kicker is that these photos from the Furfinity page were also posted long after the Beast Forum's posts. On September 3rd, 2014, the Dogman 2 posted that he would be moving. Anyone in or near Oakdale, Pennsylvania? I'm moving there soon and I was wondering if I could meet some new buddies when I move there. Throw me a message or comment below if you're interested in meeting. Would love to have some more zoo friends. So, where was Kiro the Wolf at this time? I'm going to college in four days. <laughs> I'm so excited. Ah yes, embarking on an important step in the life of every young adult going to college. So where was Kiro going to college? Well, he was moving to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oakdale is a suburb of Pittsburgh, PA. And to add to that, on the Pennsylvania Furries website, the website for furries from fucking Pennsylvania, where does Kiro list his location? Oakdale, Pennsylvania. After all of this was discovered by Kiwi Farms users and reported by Archive the Wolf on YouTube, all photos of Coda from Kiro's fur affinity page suddenly disappeared. He was covering his tracks. In 2017, the Dogman 2 stated that they had 9 years of experience with animals. If this is true, then Kiro was 13 years old when he first began abusing animals. This would also mean that he had been doing all of this for 10 years prior to the leaks, and for the entire time he was on YouTube. The entire time he was featured in a Shane Dawson video, he was raping dogs and talking to other like-minded dog rapists. My puppy, oh so long ago. Well, he's all grown up. He was really cute back then, and still is to this day. According to Zudonym's leaks, Kiro is one of the many involved in the zoo sadism chat logs. Names like Zyro, Glowfox, Emberwolf, and Techno Husky are just some of those implicated in the allegations. But as mentioned before, Kiro's crimes were honestly tame when compared to the other people in these chats. One particular individual who would have his crimes somewhat overshadowed due to the e-celebrity status of Kiro would be thoroughly exposed by Kiwi Farms users. He's gone by many names online, but Woof is the one most commonly associated with his crimes, which include a wide variety of animal abuse, torture, and killings. Anyone scrolling through the things he talked about doing would be thoroughly disturbed. So apparently these disgusting pieces of shit have uh, different methods that they enjoy for torturing and killing animals. Uh, this is from another person in the group, Wolf. A wooden toy I used to fuck a virgin bitch. Honey was applied to a few hours before so that the fire ants would cover the toy. It was shoved into a virgin bitch pussy minutes later. Snake thing, I saw that. I love it. So just so you understand what this person is saying, they made a wooden stake and they covered it in honey to get fire ants on it. And then once it was covered in ants, they inserted it into a dog. You know, when we started this, it was Kiro fucking a dead deer carcass. And people were like, holy shit, that's fucked up. How could it get worse? Here you go. Woof, real name Ruben Pernas, age 29 from Havana, Cuba, was an integral member to these Telegram chats, being specifically interested in zoo sadism. He not only shared animal torture content, but also created it himself, going into explicit detail about how he would acquire animals to then use for his sick pleasure. While it wasn't exactly easy to identify who he was, given the actual content of his messages describing atrocity after atrocity committed towards animals in his care, users were dedicated to getting his docs. Once identified, Kiwi Farms users reached out to him via email. Rather than not responding, he instead admitted that all of the confessions he made in the Telegram leaks were, in fact, real, and begged to not have his information published. I understand your concerns and how difficult it is for you and your team slash friends to believe in my sincerity after everything I did and said. I assure you and promise you that I do regret for everything I did. I promise that I will not do the things I did ever again. I assure you, I'm neither a threat nor a danger. I want to find peace and with your help, leave the past buried so that I can start a new life, away from my old life. My advice? 
Look not only for the dark animal groups, but for the human dark groups also. Those groups make you ready to do the worst things you can think of. Those places corrupt your mind and who you are and are like a drug. Once you get in, you can't get out easily. I know the things I did cannot be undone or forgiven. You have the power to destroy me at any time. I'm just asking for a second chance. I'm no longer a threat, nor now, or in the future. Don't do as I did. Please have mercy for that which mercy I did not have. I don't know if there's anything he could possibly do to right the wrongs he committed, but it is worth noting that nothing in this massive apology expresses any real remorse for his actions. He only wishes that no consequences will befall him for everything he did. Obviously, Kiwi users immediately got all of the information together and posted his full docs to 8chan. This resulted in press coverage, the involvement of animal rights groups, social media posts, and flyers and a protest involving hundreds for animal rights in Cuba. But as of now, Wolf's whereabouts are unknown. One poster claimed he was awaiting trial, but that there has not been any updates since. This is likely because there are no laws against animal abuse in Cuba, meaning there's nothing the authorities can really charge him with. For now, it appears one of the most egregious culprits is still on the loose, possibly abusing dogs to this day. But Wolf was only uncovered to be as depraved as he was once the leaks were made public and people began combing through all of it. The initial info dump primarily aimed to take down one individual, Snake Thing, known in real life as Levi Dane Simmons, born December 20th, 1994. Snake Thing, I love puppies, XD, wags, I agree. This is a conversation with Wolf now. Played with a four-month-old puppy yesterday, but only for a little while. He humped really nice and had a beautiful cock. Wish I could spend more time with them to take some pics. Snake Thing was a close friend of Kiro's, discussing bestiality often in their logs. But Snake Thing himself was depraved in his own unique ways, not only abusing animals, but also children on a regular basis. Those involved in the group chats recognized him as a key organizer among zoos, helping them network and make new friends with similar interests. In the logs themselves, he admitted to raping a 12-year-old puppy, as well as abusing his nephews. You may also recognize him from the chat logs with Woof as the two were in contact and frequently praised each other for their exploits. On March 9th, 2020, he pled guilty to six charges of encouraging child sexual abuse in the first degree and four charges of encouraging child sexual abuse in the second degree. His sentence is for 25 years in prison, meaning he would be released in 2045. Another member of the chat, Corey the Wolf, TWC, was similarly charged as of 2019 and was awaiting trial, but there has not been any updates since then that I can find. The aforementioned puppy rape by Snake Thing occurred in a motel room in the seaside town of Coos Bay, Oregon. But Snake Thing himself, being legally blind and basically unable to leave his home most of the time, was not able to pull this off on his own. Instead, he had an accomplice, Tim Wynn. While everyone I've discussed thus far has been pretty young, Timothy George Amoroso is not. At 60 years old, he's had quite a history of animal abuse. For half of his life, there's been documentation of these acts going all the way back to the early days of the internet. Naturally, once things became more user-friendly and younger zoophiles and zoosadists made their way to chat groups and the like, Tim became involved in reaching out to these people to share his own disgusting interests. I've given a lot of dogs slash puppy sedatives with the desired outcome. Most just don't know the fun of a squirmy puppy stuck on your cock. Puppy guts are best fresh. When fresh, I think they smell delicious. There is message after message of Tim describing his favorite activities. Acquiring a puppy, abusing it, torturing it, and even having sex with wounds he would inflict while the animal was still alive. Once dead, he would then cook the animals and eat them. Tim has been creating snuff films for decades and aiding other zoosadists and exercising their sick urges as well. He's truly one of the most evil people I have ever read about and feels straight out of a horror film. But I assure you, Tim Amoroso is a very real guy who has done a lot of very real, very terrible things. Things so horrific, my vocabulary limits me from truly outlining just how fucking evil this guy is. After meeting on Reddit, Tim and Snake Thing would move conversations to Telegram. This made it possible for the two to eventually meet and torture animals together. Despite being doxxed and having a tip submitted to the FBI, Tim Wynn was believed to be at large until mid-2019, when he sent an email to the host of the Zooier Than Thou podcast. In this email, he claims to be under investigation by law enforcement and in some kind of therapy program. In July, he created a new Reddit account, claiming he was trying to find treatment for his impulses, seemingly expressing remorse for his past. However, as Archive the Wolf reported, within weeks he was back to his old ways posting on Reddit about the abuse of animals. 
It's believed that Tim Wynn is at large to this day. Now there's one last person I want to cover specifically who is important to our story, and is yet another tie between Kiro and the Zeusadism leaks. Colwyn Colley. It's a name I have yet to mention, and honestly when hearing it for the first time it sort of strikes me as a generic name for a furry. Kiro the Wolf has spent time in a YouTube video, as well as on Twitter, mourning the loss of Colwyn Colley, who he claims to have been his boyfriend for some time, who had unfortunately passed away due to a drug overdose. If you've spent any time researching furries, you may be familiar with the fact that there seems to be a persistent drug problem at conventions and behind the scenes. For whatever reasons, many attendees like to experiment with hard drugs. Kiro's video in particular was praised by his fans for talking about something so personal and addressing a serious issue in the fandom. But once the Zeusadism leaks were released and Kiro was implicated, all of his past became subject to scrutiny, including the existence of Colwyn Kali. The reason why? Well, for one, the video and any tweets about Colwyn Colley were specifically removed when the leaks happened. As far as anyone has been able to figure out, Colwyn Colley never existed. At least, not under that name. Kiro did have a boyfriend. His name was Ilwan Shepipaz, someone also implicated in the Zeusadism leaks. Via the chat logs, it can be seen he was buddy-buddy with Snake Thing and Woof, as well as being the significant other of Kiro. Much like Colwyn Colley, Sheppy died of a drug overdose, being referenced specifically by Kiro in the Telegram chat logs when discussing his disappearance and eventual passing. No rush or pressure, bud. Kiro, is it about Illy? Because we've been trying to find out what happened for a week now. A day went by, and then a week went by. I started to get worried. We tried reaching out to his work. They couldn't tell us anything. We searched everywhere online. Nothing turned up. So my friend is going to try to get a hold of his father tomorrow and see if he checked himself in somewhere. And then I tried to contact all of his friends, I tried to contact his parents. Last thing he sent me was a Google joke. And he sent me this stupid Google picture. It was so stupid, but it was funny at the time. And then I didn't hear from him again. So I, I responded and he never gave back a response. I found out what happened. On Friday, after his day stuff, he got his hands on some weed and heroin. The heroin was laced. I really hate to say it, but he died. They found him on Sunday. And then finally, one of his friends messaged me and told me he was gone. He overdosed on drugs and they found him in his apartment. That very same day, July 21st, 2018, Kiro makes a tweet announcing his boyfriend Colwyn Colley had died from a drug overdose. Kiro deleted all traces of Colwyn Colley because he realized that he had accidentally tied himself to the Zeusadism leaks. He basically caught himself and was bold enough to lie about the identity of his boyfriend's passing to his audience of thousands of people. Keep in mind, this person is also a serial animal abuser and zoo sadist who participated in all of the same shit everyone else there did. In the messages, Kiro mourns his loss. It's just, the reason why I don't date... Well, the reason before I dated him was because I could never find someone with the same interests as me. I could not date a non-zoophile, because I hate hiding things from mates. He was perfect, he understood me as a person, and we had so much in common. With so much heat on the situation, it would only be a matter of time before the police were involved in some capacity with Kiro himself. In November of 2018, Video evidence as well as the logs were sent to the police. Many were hopeful that this investigation would lead to some level of punishment, maybe a stint in jail at least. I look forward to his pending arrest and imprisonment. Unfortunately, this was not the case, and today, Kiro is a free man. But it wasn't for lack of trying. On September 2nd of 2019, the Kiro Archive posted a thread detailing why the investigation failed to produce any charges, going in-depth with the statute of limitations, as well as the evidence presented to the New York Police. I've spent the last two weeks looking over the evidence that had been given to the New York Police investigating Kiro the Wolf. In this thread, I explain why there's hard proof the statute of limitations is what hamstrung New York's case against Kiro, and how he's gotten away on a technicality. In November of 2018, the New York police were sent a video found on 8chan of a mostly unseen camera person molesting a large black and brown dog with long hair, and a document explaining the implications Kiro was behind the video and Coda was the dog being abused. A public version of the document was posted on November 7th, 2018 
to mega.nz. It was taken down, most likely for using uncensored stills from the video. In the video, the camera person could be seen wearing the same black shoes and gray striped sweater Kira wore to the Pennsylvania Furries. January 17th, 2015, Cosmic Furball Event. And here, comparisons between the screenshots of the video in question are shown, where it is clearly seen that the video's creator is wearing shoes identical to those Kiro had worn to a furry convention. The same applies to his sweatshirt, where the same colored cuff and style of sweatshirt can be seen on Kiro and the creator of this video. As some additional pieces, it's pointed out that the dog in the video has the same fur patterns as Kiro's German Shepherd, and that he has the same red collar. They did some extensive comparisons of the fur patterns, and they really do look exactly the same. As for when the video was taken, it actually isn't recent, at least if it's to be believed that Kiro is in fact the creator. For a moment in the video, the chin of the cameraman could be seen which appears to be clean-shaven. Kiro has not been clean-shaven in images of himself since 2014, hence why it is believed that the video was four years old as of the time of the initial leaks in 2018. Now, for the video to not be Kiro, here are the circumstances just to run it back a bit. For this video to not be Kiro the Wolf, there would have to be another furry who owns a dog that looks exactly the same, owns the same red collar for the dog, owns the same tennis shoes, owns the same sweatshirt, and browses the same areas of the internet Kiro does. At least, enough for a video to eventually be leaked to 8chan of them abusing their dog. If you think that's not enough, then by all means, believe what you want. But I think most have probably drawn their own conclusions based on this and everything else. So why was this video not enough to get Kiro put in jail? I mean, if this is him, why is he not imprisoned? Kiro would have you think that it's because he was simply exonerated of all possible charges and that he's completely innocent. But as with most legal issues, it's a little more complicated than that. Bestiality is a misdemeanor in New York, and their statute of limitations on misdemeanors is two years. If this video was from an episode of animal sex abuse that happened in 2014 or earlier, the police in 2018 couldn't do anything about it. I looked for the 8chan thread and was able to find the link to the 8chan upload of the video. Doesn't work anymore due to 8chan shutting down. Note the URL ends with a video file name. Movie underscore number 27 underscore 2014 1129 underscore 002340.mp4. I knew Kiro had uploaded photos and videos of himself abusing Coda to Beast Forum and began searching the archived threads and posts there to see if anything matched. On November 30th, 2014, Kiro uploaded his first bestiality video to Beast Forum. The video had a very familiar file name, and if we compare these two, they are in fact a match as far as the file name. The jumble of numbers in the file name is the date the video was taken, November 29th, 2014, at 12.23 and 40 seconds a.m. A day and two years too late for the New York police to charge Kiro for bestiality and distribution due to their statute of limitations on misdemeanors. So, to be clear, Kiro is currently innocent in the eyes of the law, but only based on the statute of limitations. If the video that was submitted to the police was submitted sooner, it's possible that there could have been charges. But a judge can't sign a search warrant for a crime that occurred in a time frame outside of that statute, and as a result, there's nothing that can be done about this particular video. Two and a half years after the initial leaks, Kiro posted a video to YouTube titled My Side. In the video, he states that he is innocent and that the police had in fact visited his apartment multiple times a week, even saying he let them search his stuff. After a month and a half, they managed to obtain a search warrant for his apartment and confiscated all of his video equipment, computers, and other electronic devices that could be associated with the production and distribution of illegal materials. At this point, Kiro states that he was depressed. This really took a toll on my mental health. I was suicidal, I was depressed, and I was just overall broken. I honestly tried to leave the community in January because no one was listening to me. But a month after everything was taken, memories poured into my head. The fandom helped me so much. Even if a lot of you dislike me, I can never dislike the fandom. Hero says that he plans to return to the fandom because it's where he feels he truly belongs and what has made him who he is today. He then goes on to discuss the allegations themselves. While it is true I have talked to Snake Thing before, I didn't know he was a monster he turned out to be. We were not friends, just some guy I met in some furry group. And we talked about feral cartoons. The logs of me are not real. There was none of that nasty shit in there, just a normal conversation between two people who like feral characters. Secondly, I want to point out the legitimacy of the person who posted the logs. This user claims to be an actual confessed zoophile, and the logs contain images of bestiality. How does that make him a legitimate source if he himself is one of those people that abuses animals? A lot of people are so eager to believe what they see online, but they don't take the time to think about things or ask basic questions. One, how can the source be trusted? Two, oh what's the motive? In the video shared by him, 
actual animals were harmed. But instead of taking it to the police, where it would do actual good, he posted online. At 15 minutes in length, you'd think there would be no lack of runtime to be discussed. But it's honestly not worth dissecting point by point here. Kiro ignores the most damning evidence while relying on anecdotal observations, like that the original leaker claims to be a zoophile themselves. His basic message is that he was slandered, he was hacked, and the chat logs are fabricated. He states that the legal process has taken its course, and as a result, people should simply drop it and stop being mad at him because he hadn't been officially charged. So we were both investigated by the police, and he was found guilty. Meanwhile, I never had a charge on me. That should say something. I'm glad Snake Thing is in jail. So many people were distracted by targeting me, while Snake Thing nearly got away with it. He was the real monster. So to wrap this up, no, I am not a zoo sadist. No, I'm not a pedophile. I know the controversy has caused the fandom a lot of pain. I will do my best to help the community like it helped me so many years ago. I am sorry for how I handled it in the beginning of this. The video was framed as a sort of response to allegations. After all, it had been done before. People like Slazo and Pro Jared had made videos prior to Kiro and successfully turned public opinion back in their favor. The difference here is that Kiro was guilty of everything he was accused of. Subsequent videos on the subject pointed out that there was even more evidence that had been dug up to tie him to the chat logs and show that he was the one in those conversations. And through all that, there were never any charges against me. If there's any evidence being used against me, the police would have found it. Sure, unless you scrubbed and encrypted your devices, which is exactly what the lead investigator for your case complained about. It sure would be a shame if you had displayed a consistent behavioral pattern of deleting evidence that would corroborate with this claim. You know, like that time you deleted your telegram less than five hours after the logs were posted. Or that time you deleted your Periscope Garage Tour video after people used it to connect the dots with animal abuse videos featuring a dog identical to yours in a garage identical to yours. Or how about that time you removed your classic ARF ARF greeting from your YouTube About section after people pointed out the chat logs featured the same greeting. Or, how about that time you deleted all your tweets and privated the video about your boyfriend, Colwyn Colley, after people pointed out he was actually the zoo sadist, Ill One Sheppy Paws? Or, that time you deleted all pictures of your dog from Fur Affinity, after I pointed out some of those same pictures were uploaded to Beast Forum, before you even made your Fur Affinity? Or, the time you removed all mention of Cheesecake from your Fur Affinity, after I pointed out that a Zoophile's <laughs> kick username was identical to your Good. saying about Cheesecake? Boy, I wonder why the police would have a hard time finding evidence on someone like you. When Archive the Wolf posted a response video to Kiro's My Side, it was received well, and praised for how succinctly it pointed out the flaws with Kiro's response. Kiro opted to have this video removed from YouTube altogether via a false copyright strike, although the full version is available through re-uploads to this day. It's important to keep in mind that most furries do not support the actions of Hero. As weird as I and many in my audience may find the fandom overall, ultimately actions have to speak louder than fursuits. Furries themselves were instrumental in bringing all of the information discovered about him to light, as well as various other Twitter users and forum accounts dedicated to compiling all of this information. And all of that should be praised, but there is undoubtedly a problem in the community. As Archive the Wolf points out, this is not an isolated incident by any means within the furry fandom. Multiple of those outed as members of bestiality chat rooms, and even those within the Zeusadism leaks themselves, continue to be members of the community to this day. An issue that some seem uninterested in weeding out. If there was a happy message to end this video on, I would. In fact, I tried very hard to find it. Unfortunately, the story of Kiro the Wolf is about as blackpilling as they get. It's the story of a man so despicable that you would be extremely hard-pressed to find anyone who doesn't associate his online alias with the terrible things he and his community were engaged in. And while Kiro was the main focus of this video, it's important to keep in mind that he was not the only one involved here. Kiro was a member of multiple group chats and was trying to build a small, isolated community for these interests. There is a non-zero chance that groups like this exist to this day and are likely sharing materials on the same, if not worse, level of disgust. There have been more leaks since then, and there will be more leaks in the future. If you'd like to know more about all of this, Cecil McFly has done two videos which go exhaustively in depth with all of this, and Archive the Wolf has done a bunch of videos going more in depth on specific criminals involved here as well. I'll link both of them in the description down below. According to his Twitter, Joshua Hoffman has left Pennsylvania after getting a new job and was in the process of moving in early April. The constant hate towards his account has died down, likely as a result of mass blocks, and to this day, while they are few in number, he has a number of people in his replies who send messages of adoration and support whenever he tweets. I've been Turkey Tom. 
Thanks for watching. And until next time, leave me alone.